The very first thing that people want to hack in any game is money. What is a computer game? Actually, just a program. Then there's source code. In the source code, you would probably create the player class for it, right? And if you want your player to have money, you would probably create the money variable for it. What actually happens when you create these classes? They get created and put somewhere in memory. We also know that we can read and write random access memory in any order. Where do we get the address? We Google. The very first link leads to GTA Mods Wiki. On the very first value, it's actually the memory address for money. Let's just trust people on the internet that the address is right and it doesn't change. We know what to do. We now need to figure out how to do it. Google. The very first link leads you to this Microsoft API reference, there's a function called write process memory. It states writes data to an area of memory in a specified process. Exactly what we need. We've read enough documentation for today. Let's skip it. We only have to read the, the header. So the function is called write process memory. It comes from Windows 32 API. Great. So we need to use this Windows API. How do we add it as a dependency? With Kotlin native, you don't have to. Just spin up idea and you just start typing code right ahead. Now we need to figure out which parameters it accepts. First parameter is this each process handle. If you think that going to the declaration of handle will help you, it will not. We have to figure out how to get it. The best tip is Google for C++ solutions and adapt them to Kotlin. So we first have to start with getting the window. We can find the window by the window name. Then there's this bit. The only meaningful part is this. We call the get window threat process ID. So we can pass the window handle that we got earlier and we should get process ID that basically runs this window. But because the Windows API is written in C++, they cannot simply return the value. What you have to do is you have to create a buffer that you pass this buffer as a parameter inside the function. And when the function has calculated the return value, it will put this value into the buffer. So we have to start out with a buffer. We can use the special alloc function that comes with Kotlin native. Word is basically Windows for integer, so you can read dword var is int var. We allocate a buffer of an int, then we pass it as a pointer to the function, and once it completed successfully, we can actually extract the return value from the buffer. That will be our process ID. And you may have noticed that we have this mems code block, and it's basically used for automatic memory management. You see, usually when you allocate memory manually by using alloc, you have to clean up memory manually, but mems code takes care of it. And the last bit to the puzzle is the open process function. We need to pass the process ID that we got earlier, and we will basically get the process handle that we need to pass then into the uh, write process memory function. It's worth noting that we need to open the process with specific permissions for reading and writing memory. Write process memory. First is h process, and we got the value for it earlier using open process function. Then there's lp base address. This is basically the, the memory address of where you want to write data, but we cannot pass it as a single number. It actually points to a location in memory, so we'll just cast it to a C pointer. We can skip lp buffer for now and go to n size, which is the size of the data that you want to write into memory. And because money is stored as d word and d word is int, we will just write for here. Back to lp buffer. This is where we need to pass the data. In our case, it's the amount of money that we want. But again, because it's C++, you cannot just pass the value, you have to pass a buffer. But that's not a problem. We already know how to work with buffers. We start with memscope, then we use the alloc to allocate an int var. But because this time we'll be passing data into the function, we first need to populate the buffer and only then invoke the function. So here we write the amount of money that we want and pass it as a pointer. The last parameter, I honestly don't know what it does. It's nullable, so I can set it to null. It works. So here's all of the code that we've written so far. And in theory, it should be enough. So let's let's run it. Pay attention to the money at the top. You can see that the money is counting in. So we've just hacked some in-game money. That's pretty cool. For that, we get some respect. 